welcome to Luna Logic Tarot. I'm Juju, and this is going to be a weekly reading for Virgo. Please keep in mind these readings are incredibly general. Um, so only take what resonates and leave the rest. If it isn't your story, do not make it fit. And don't forget to check your other placements uh, once they're all completed and uploaded to YouTube. Um, also, please keep in mind everything is subject to free will. <clears throat> your free will and anyone or anything that you are energetically connected to in the past, currently, and or in the future. Also, everything is subject to the will of the divine. No one is free from the law of cause and effect. Okay, so when I was meditating on your energy, um, now, two things. I feel like this is a Virgo man, um, but if you identify as masculine, then this reading could be for you as well. Um, or if you're a feminine energy or you're, you're a woman, or what have you, or identify as such, and this is your masculine energy within you, then this could also go, but I, I feel like it's more for a Virgo man. So let me tell you what I was picking up on. I was feeling a heartache that I couldn't possibly begin to really put into words. It was, I, I, all I could see was somebody who was is very angry maybe they were breaking things in their um home or a place or something like that but when they laid down on a couch somewhere they just i mean it's like someone who was just so upset at themselves i don't feel like it was about being upset at anyone else i feel like it was being upset at themselves at, at this person was upset with themselves so upset with themselves to the point where they couldn't hold the anger anymore. And they literally kind of dropped to their knees and just bawled and cried and weeped with, and cried out with such pain and sorrow. It's almost like hard to breathe kind of feeling. So... Cross watchers, you're more than welcome to be here. Just know I will be reading it from Virgo's perspective. I do feel like this reading is going to be solely about Virgo. And I specifically feel it's going to be about a Virgo man. We'll see what comes out. But I, I mean, this, when I was kind of meditating on the energy, like it had me pacing back and forth. So I feel like this person was, I feel like Virgo, I feel like you're pacing a lot. Um, I feel like you are on the verge, if not already, literally hitting rock bottom. Okay? And that's not to say that you're a bad person. No, you're not a bad person. Everybody at some point goes at rock bottom. Somebody, even if it's not about like any form of addiction, right? Let's say, let's take put that to the side. Let's just say there's no addiction of any kind, okay? You could have emotional traumas that are festering so much that you're acting from an unconscious state, literally. You are acting from a place of trauma that you are not even able to see. And I feel like there's so much sorrow for something you've done or something you've said are for over something and i'm also picking up that there is like a mother figure or a mother i think this is childhood where you hear this constant hyper criticism and uh belittling in your head from a mother okay this could be a mother a grandmother or not somebody that you well uh, childhood feeling like uh, almost feels like you're chasing the approval of a mother but more so chasing the approval of a father Okay, but your your it feels like your ego has protected you from feeling this pain for a very 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 long time. I feel like you didn't grieve something, and now something's triggered where you're about to experience heavy grief, and like you're going to like there was almost a fighting against emotion. You fought against it for a very long time, and now you're it's kind of like you're being pushed into it. Okay, so let's see what happens now. For girl ladies, this could be something you're going through. Um, this could be something that uh, you know someone around you is going through. So again, I mean, gender doesn't really matter, or gender identity, preferences, orientation, or whatever. But I do, 
I guess I just saw this Virgo man. I don't know who this Virgo man is. Um, I didn't see the face or anything, but, um, yeah. So, let's see. So, what's going on? They want me to start off with these Chakra Oracle cards. Um, okay, first, let's see. Wow. Okay. There's, okay. Show me Virgo, please. Despondence. Yeah. Okay. Complacency. Show me Virgo. Expansion in reverse. Show me Virgo. Balance. Okay. Bottom of the deck, we've got facade in reverse. So, Virgo. Let's talk. Where's my pencil? Okay. <clears throat> You're resentful. You're resentful of a mother's complacency from the past, from childhood. And that is what's blocking you from finding expansion and balance. You are very despondent over a mother's inability to see beyond themselves. You're very despondent over a mother's depression from the past. You're resentful over it, actually. Very much so. There's... Virgo, I feel like you have a very, very strong mother wound. A deep mother wound or trauma. And this is what is blocking you from expansion. You have a masculine guardian, and that's in spirit. And they're sending you their approval through dreams, through little synchronistic events, but you're not listening to it. You're passing it off as coincidental or that it didn't happen or, you know, whatever. You're very angry and you're not balanced. But the facade that you carry, you've, you've held up for so long is starting to fall. It's starting to, to well, no one, it never really served you. Maybe it did way back in the day, but now it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't serve you anymore, and I think you're starting to realize that it's not serving you. What's behind that? Mysticism. Miracle. You're praying for a miracle, and you, you have a fear of being rejected. Or you could be feeling like someone's rejection was a miracle. But you feel like something, you're not on your destiny. You, you want forgiveness, but you're not. You want forgiveness, but you don't get forgiveness because you haven't healed impasse you're trying to move past this you're trying not to have a lot of a big ego you don't have a lot of passion for something but you just feel like time's wasting you feel like you you feel like you're wasting time burning daylight um it feels very impulsive actually you're not coming from a place of groundedness or center you're coming from a place of childhood wounding and trauma i just gotta let you know and there's this great um saying by carl Jung. Um, he was, he, yeah, he was a, a, a great depth, um, one of the grandfathers of modern psychology, but he was a depth psychologist. So he works really deep on the subconscious level. And he also, um, tied it with like, you know, mysticism and spirituality as well, because he felt like there was a lot of things, uh, I'm not, I'm paraphrasing, so paraphrasing that, um, they kind of correlate. So, and the quote is. Knowing your own darkness is the best method for dealing with the darkness of other people. Carl Jung. Okay. You're being forced to face your shadow self. Your, your shadow is reflecting back to you in other people. So that way you can see what it is that you're doing. I feel like you've lived a life where you basically were unconscious and I don't mean like you're asleep but I mean like not realizing you're working from an, a subconscious unconscious level you're solely operating from your shadow that doesn't mean you don't have um moments of nobility and see your light and what have you that's not that you haven't addressed your inner child wounds like at all 
there's there's no addressing it not really not to completion not to fullness and although people love you very much so you refuse to accept that love so you sabotage it and then you feel rejected but you're the one who sabotaged it So, but I feel like this is definitely standing from a place of uh, codependency, big time as well, but also very strong. You might have had to be the caretaker for your mother when you were a kid or a teenager. And maybe you feel like you have to, um, you feel like your childhood was robbed from you as well. Maybe you had to grow up really fast because you had to care for a mother that had a lot of depression for whatever reason. So with that being said, there's a there you're 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 being given an opportunity right now to do the work that you were meant to do. You can't change what's already happened and you can't change, you can't go back to childhood and you can't change that. What you can do, however, is learn to heal and you which means you're gonna have to grieve. You're gonna have to grieve all the losses all the way back to childhood that you never allowed yourself to grieve that you or maybe there wasn't time to grieve it because you're too busy caring for a mother figure. But you're going to have to go through all the stages of grief. Okay? And you're going to have to grieve all those losses. Because if you don't... If you don't grieve them... There's a, I feel such a tightness in my chest right now. Somebody here, whomever is watching this, um, Crosswatcher could be you, but I get strong. This might be a Virgo man. It could also be a Virgo woman. Okay. However you identify, but I feel very strong masculine energy here. There is somebody here who is resentful of a mother who didn't give them time. Who's resentful of a mother that they had to care for because the mother was complacent. The mother didn't care. The mother was selfish. The mother only focused on herself. The mother didn't teach them anything. The mother wasn't kind, not super loving, not super caring. Was Now, that's not to say, you know, that the mother was going through great depression, you know, through, through a depression. That doesn't mean that she was a bad person. It means that she didn't take care of herself. So, therefore, she neglected her children. So, and there is a level of resentment about that. The, of the neglect of from a mother figure and the abandonment. I don't see a father figure here. It could be a, I mean, I did see like a father in spirit here. Um, maybe somebody here feels abandoned by a father. And ignored by a mother. Who was just about themselves. And then, and then something happened, and then the depression set in, and then they only cared about themselves. Um, yeah. Okay. Gossip. This mother could have been a gossiper. This mother could probably, even now, if she's, if she's still living, tell other people your business. She's like the washwoman. She's, she's very manipulative. She's, she's a gossiper. She um, tells tall tales. She, she lies. She's selfish. She has ulterior motives. She doesn't... Um, she's not healed herself. Mm -mm. I feel like you're being asked to break generational trauma. Okay? Um, whether you have children or not, I feel like you're being asked to break it. Uh, unfortunately, it's being put onto your head. Okay? If you choose to accept it, if not, then you will pass it down to other people in your life. That could be a child, that could be a sibling, that could be, um, you know, a, a spouse possibly. And you're you're gonna do you're gonna be abusive, and you're going to be neglectful, and you're going to be you know, uh, one who abandons people the way you were done because that's all you've known. You have an opportunity to heal perfection yeah i feel like you yeah look you're just you're it's like 
no matter what you bring in to plant seeds, someone's always got something to say about what it is that you're doing, and in especially including a mother. You could also feel really bad for a grandmother. You feel like the grandmother was a gossiper as well. Um, or you feel like the grandmother or and the mother were both gossipers and you looked at them as being perfect. Nobody is perfect. Not even you. Nobody else. No one is perfect, right? I feel like people gossip about you, which makes you, and you I feel like you almost, you catch wind of it or you can feel it emotionally and or intuitively. And it's like uh, the hypercriticism or the hypercritic within your mind starts to plague you and you start to hear it in other people's voices, um, especially a mother figure and a grandmother figure. Um, the father in spirit here is is trying to get you to see something that you need balance in your life. You're not in balance right now at all. I feel like you expect perfection from others because someone in your childhood expected perfection from you. You weren't really allowed to be a kid. You had to grow up real fast. Real fast. It's like no matter what you brought to somebody, it was never good enough, it seems like. Release. Look. Look. Listen, this is going to be... Oh, my God. It's going to be crying. Um, hold on. <clears throat> Okay, listen, listen, release the need for perfection in yourself and in others, okay? You've got to do this deeper healing. Your father in spirit is asking you, whether that's an actual father, a grandfather, a father figure, or just whomever you believe and divinely, in, in divine, okay, is asking you to release, release the need for perfection for perfection, release the need for gossip, release the need for things to be just the way you think it's supposed to be, just so you can get the approval of parents and grandparents that were self-absorbed. It wasn't your fault. It isn't your fault. There was nothing you could have done, Virgo. Nothing. There's nothing you could have done to change any of it. None of it. And it wasn't your fault. And it wasn't your responsibility as a kid. You didn't do it. You didn't cause it. I feel like because of whatever happened, somebody blamed you as a kid. Didn't protect you as a kid or teenager. They blamed you instead. They Then they had an unrealistic expectation to you to basically take the role or to pro help provide for or to console or to protect or to emotionally um fulfill a mother figure that's like emotional incest okay when a mother figure or father figure for that matter but i'm specifically talking about a mother when they tell a child or a kid things that or talks with children about adult things and then puts that burden on them or expects them to take the place of a, a mate or a partner, but not necessarily in a sexual way, but in a way where it's like we're, you're fulfilling the parents' emotional needs, that is considered emotional incest. And it's wrong. And it's abuse. And it's neglect. And it's not fair. And it's not your job. And it's not you're not responsible for that. And you're not responsible for them. You never were and never will be. Wasn't your fault, isn't your fault. Just because your parent or parents were traumatized, that doesn't excuse the abuse that they gave you. Period. Fucking period. Shh. Sorry. Period. Period. And, but I will say this. I will say this, even though it wasn't your fault, it isn't your fault from childhood, period, point blank, period, period, cross the fucking board. You were, not only did you, were you abandoned, or you feel like you were abandoned and left behind by one parent, you are even emotionally abandoned by the other one, okay, period, that's what happened, and you're being asked by someone in spirit, or by the divine, by God, by the universe, by source, whatever it is that you believe in, 
You're being asked to release the grief, to, to allow yourself to feel all the losses, to allow yourself to grieve the whole process of grief of all the losses so you can bring balance into your life. You're being asked, you're being called to do so. I feel this very, very strongly. There is nothing you could have, you can do or could have done to ever have gotten the approval of somebody who doesn't even approve of themselves. Whether they're living or not. Now or in the past. Okay? Now this is directly related to parental stuff. So you are literally being asked and begged even by someone from spirit and, and you're being asked and called by the divine to release, to allow yourself to feel, to drop the ego, to drop the facade and feel it, to understand your own darkness, to understand why it is that you act the way that you do. Or in the ways that you, you know, why you don't take certain actions and why you self-sabotage and why you are constantly trying to feel a hole within you with any form of escapism. With any form. What you're trying to feel can only be filled and, heal and closed up with healing and forgiveness. Anything else is futile. You're searching for something within yourself. You're searching for something to feel, to fill up that, those wounds, that hole in your heart, that, that pain, that trauma that can only be filled and completed and healed from healing, from forgiveness. And that's a process and it takes a, it takes a while. It won't happen overnight. If, you, if anyone is telling you it has to happen overnight, then that person doesn't need to be in your life because you can't have it overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. It just doesn't. It's just not the way it works, Virgo. You understand? I hope you understand what I'm saying. You are lovable, Virgo. You are lovable. You are loved. You are valid. You are accepted. You are seen by the divine and by whomever this is that's with me on my right side right now in spirit that's touching the top of my head and, uh, or excuse me, my, my left side, my left shoulder and the top of my head. They love you. They didn't tell you enough. They didn't tell you enough. But they, they really do love you. And they're with you right now in the, your darkest moment. You are not alone. You are not alone. Even if you're physically, technically alone... You're not alone. Your angels are with you. This loved one is with you. Always. All you have to do is but think of him. And he is there. He is with you. Right now. Trying to guide you. If you'll listen. This person. This. This uh, masculine in spirit. This man in spirit. They want you to know that they're sorry. They, okay, they're very remorseful and they said, you know about what? They're with you. They accept you. They acknowledge you and they're proud of the man that you are. They know your heart. They want you to know your heart. They want you to let your heart be open. 
mysticism. They're saying, listen, they're with you. They're saying you have a philosophy, enlightenment. They want you to take a spiritual path here of discovery of yourself to open up your heart to find them, to discover them, to discover whatever, to discover God, to discover the universe, to discover source, whatever it is that you believe, Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad, I mean, Allah, whomever, Jesus Christ, whomever it is that you believe in, not with being dogmatic, not without being self-righteous. There's, they're asking you to humble yourself. They're asking you to pray to whomever or whatever it is that you believe to pray, whether that's mantras, prayers, um, I don't know, however it is that you pray. I'm, I'm, they just, that's all I know is the way, however it is that you connect with the divine that is constructive for you, not destructive. That doesn't mean drugs or alcohol. Or escapism. Because it loses its meaning. If you're an addict. They want you to discover who you are. They want you to see yourself as they see you. They want you to see yourself as you actually see yourself. And they want you to see yourself as other people see you. Meaning like. They want you to understand that your words. And your actions. And lack thereof have a price that other people have been paying for you. Not anymore. Okay. Anything else from this deck, please? You're being asked to submit to the divine. You're asked, you're being asked to surrender perfection. Surrender perfection. Surrender to recovery. You have the keys. You have the keys to your own recovery. Maybe you don't have the tools. Maybe you need to go somewhere for this. Maybe you need to go somewhere and, and stay so you can... Receive the, the tools that help you to use the key to unlock yourself. The key is recovery. That is the key. That's what I'm being told. I'm being told just like that. The key is recovery that you deny yourself and others. Okay, that was intense. Okay. You have great purpose. You are purposeful. You have intrinsic value. What the question is, what are you going to do with it? They want me to get this deck. Hold on, I gotta find it. One second. It's all the way. Hold on. It's really um I have it all somewhere. Hold on. Um I hope it's over here. Nope. Let me see. You're really being asked to to do something that um you're afraid to do. You're afraid of recovery, you're afraid of healing, you're afraid. You're scared of what that means for you. You're scared. They're just talking to me as I'm looking for this stuff. I'm sorry. Um, okay, I need to slow down a little bit. They want you to understand. Oh, okay. That's the, that's the deck you want me to use? Okay. They want me to use a different deck, and this one's going to be a little harder for you to hear. Okay. So, apologies in advance for any triggers. Because you will be, you're about to be triggered. Even more so right now. And I just want to say I'm sorry in advance. Um, definitely not my intention to do so on purpose. Nevertheless, they are literally screaming at me saying there is no other option. You've exhausted all other opportunities. You've exhausted all other options. You've exhausted all other avenues for your personal healing. You have fought it every, fought the divine, yourself, and everybody else every single step of the way. And yet you wonder why things are not going in your favor right now. Because you refuse. You refuse to submit. You refuse to surrender to the divine. And you think it has no consequences. Well, it does. Okay, oh boy, here we go. Damn. 
There we go. All right, here we go. Oh, let's see. Hey, shh. Sorry, my kids are being like extra loud. Um, okay, so you're refusing. You think that you you can do this on your own. You truly and absolutely 100% think that you can battle these demons, which are your addictions and your codependencies and your toxicity alone. Well, let me tell you something because you think that you're perfect in this when you're not. Let me tell you something. You've never done a damn thing in your life ever alone. The divine has been with you every single fucking step of the way. Get that through your head, Virgo. And humble yourself. Ooh, I don't like this feeling. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that, hold on. I don't know if y'all are throwing up right now or you're about to. I got chills going right down my spine. My feet are, the, my palms and my hands and my bottom of my feet are on fire right now. This is intense. Okay, this is about to be really intense. <clears throat> okay. They said you need a father's stern talking. And you need a mother's soft understanding. Okay. Virgo. Okay. You need to reparent yourself. Be the parents that you deserve that you didn't have. You have met a, a mediator in reverse. Okay. So I'm going to read it from the light and shadow side. But I'm going to speak to you on it in reverse here. You don't want anybody to, to help you with. You don't want to go to recovery. You're refusing it. Well, you know what? Until you accept and surrender to recovery, period, you will suffer. You will be stuck. Yeah. You think that you can overcome this on your own and stick with it for an extended amount of time You're without doing no trauma work, without doing no recovery work? No. You are literally addicted to things because of your wounds. Not because it just feels good. It, it helps you to mask pain. You're being stubborn for no good reason. They're saying because you're afraid. So they want me to read this to you. Mediator says the light attributes. Gifts for negotiating fairness and strategy in personal and professional life. Respect for both sides of an argument. Shadow attribute says negotiating with an ulterior motive or hidden agenda. Agenda either personally or professionally. Yes, you do not... You do backhanded deals and you do not give somebody or anybody else a chance to have their work because you always got to be perfectly right when you're wrong. Your feelings are right and they're valid. Yes. But so is everybody else's, Virgo. You ain't the only one. You're not fair. And you expect everybody to make sacrifices for you, but yet you do not acknowledge the sacrifices of others that they've done for you, but yet you want everybody to give you credit for the sacrifices you made. Well, what sacrifices have you actually made other than self-gratifying ones that you've fulfilled over and over and over? We got prostitute here. Okay. You're selling your soul. You're prostituting your spirit for whatever escapism you can get. And I don't mean like actual like people who are in the sex working field. I'm talking about you are literally selling out your soul. For what? Got Samaritan here in the reverse, though. But I'm going to read them like this, and I'll, I'll read them to you. You are, 
you're doing things so people will see you in a certain light versus doing things for, for people with a joyous heart and expecting nothing in return on the back end. You want everything to be a contract. A transaction. All right, let's read it. So for the prostitute here, it says, light attribute says, uh, accentuates the challenge of surviving without negotiating the power of your spirit. It is your soul for sale, Virgo. Because it looks like you're selling it. Shadow attribute says, places material considerations and security above self-empowerment. If you married for money or you want to be with somebody because they give you a home to stay in, you'll pay for that. You're selling yourself. And you're selling yourself short at that matter. I am also getting here. You find a way to disempower people and then you call it being charitable. But really you're doing it uh, on purpose. You have a motive. You have an ulterior motive here. Samaritan says, light attribute refines your capacity to help those who help those you would prefer to ignore. Shadow attribute says, exacting appreciation and recognition for the help you offer. So you're doing it just so you can say and look good versus doing it from a heart of joy and of compassion and charity. You have an ulterior motive. You're just doing things for people to see you as a certain way or a certain light when really that's not may not be who you really are. Because you resent people after you've done something nice for them. You still resent it. Maybe they didn't give you the, the best uh, reaction that you expected to get. Let's see what you need to surrender. And then I'll pull a couple tarot cards. Surrender your belief in scarcity. The universe is asking you to open to the infinite nature of abundance. In this way, you can remove blocks in your life and succeed beyond your wildest dreams. You have a fear of missing out and you have a lack mentality. Maybe you were neglected with food and shelter and what you, your basic and essential needs as a kid. Have a fear of missing out big time. And you also have surrender to the beauty of the natural world. Take a relaxing break and spend time in nature. Replenish yourself by feeling the beauty and the ecstasy there. Instead of drugs or alcohol or escapism, or greed, or addictions, or codependency, or whatever that is, is, is your vice. Other people, pornography, whatever it is. Surrender your attachment to results. The formula for success is to do all you can to make things happen, then let go of the results. Holding on too tightly to a desired outcome can sabotage it. And I feel like you have recently just sabotaged to something. You wanted somebody so bad or wanted a situation, a relationship, whether it be business, romantic, so badly that you have a fear due to scarcity and lack mentality that you unconsciously from your unhealed, festering childhood traumas, you sabotage, you self-sabotage. And then you blame the other person for it. Because you're afraid of security. You're afraid of being abundant. You're afraid of being happy. You're afraid of being loved fully. Being seen fully for who you really are. Because you don't want people to get too close. But then you get mad when they walk away. But you won't let them in. So what are they supposed to do? Surrender to your soul's path. Your life's journey has been per perfectly designed for your soul's growth. Embrace every lesson in every moment, and you're about to learn them now. You're learning them now. 
I heard that song Bridge Over Troubled Waters by Simon and Gar Garfunkel. Surrender to what is. Flow with what is instead of fighting it. When you can't change the situation, compassionately accepting it exactly as it is will bring you peace. You're not a peace. You need to heal. You need to heal. Surrender your surrender to your intuition. Tune in to your inner voice and beware of any gut feelings, flashes, knowings, or aha moments that come through to guide you. But if you're so if you have a lot of trauma, your intuition could be a little off. So I feel like I feel like your intuition was telling you something, but you took it as something totally different. I feel like your intuition told you what you were seeing or you intuitively knew that there was nothing wrong with that or there was no, nothing really happened. But because it's jumbled up because you haven't healed, you heard ego step in and say, no, this is what's happening. When no, that's not what was happening. You're being, yeah. Surrender the habit of people pleasing. Speak your needs and be true to yourself. Focus on your own happiness instead of always trying to make everyone else happy. I also feel here, somebody here, the Virgo here has got some pretty disgustingly awful friends that uh, do some, that are not good for them. Now, they're on their own path. Let me try not to be judgmental here. But somebody here has got some friends that are not healthy for them. And get them, uh, that says, not, I'm not going to paint Virgo as a victim here, but I'm saying like this. Who you are the company that you keep, Virgo. You are the company that you keep. Birds of a feather flock together. Okay? Guilty by association. So you need to like check your friend circle. Who is healthy for you? Who is not healthy for you? Surrender it says surrender worry. Make a commitment not not to lead an anxiety driven life. When worries arise, breathe them out of your body. Focus on the power of your heart and have faith that spirit is guiding you always. I feel like there is so much healing that needs to happen here. And it's going to take you some time. And that's okay. There's no deadline. Time, healing isn't linear. And there's no timeline on it. Okay? But it needs to get started. Like you're really being called to get started on this like now. Surrender outdated beliefs about yourself. Yep. Here we go. Lack of limiting ideas about yourself that originate from the past. Uh, you can't see that. Sorry. Let go of limiting ideas about yourself that originate from the past. Then you can own your power and soar in your life, but not before then. You have to do the healing work. Also, surrender to divine timing here. And it says, sometimes divine timing may differ from your ego's timing. If a goal isn't manifesting fast enough according to your ego, be patient and trust the universal flow. Alright, they want me to get one last oracle. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to pull any uh, tarot on this one this time, I don't think. They want me to get a dark mirror. There's something that you need to see in the mirror. They need to be shown. We'll read it. Let's see. Spear, what messages do you have for Virgo with this deck, please? Black flower fragrance. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, well, they said one more. Anything else for a Virgo, please, this we're resonating for? Virgo, please. Virgo. Parasite. Something's been bothering you for quite some time. Okay, they said for me to read that last. Okay. So, I guess I'm going to pull some Oracle. Or, not Oracle, but, um, um, Tarot real fast. But they want me to read it last. Okay. I'm going to listen to the Divine and what they, what they know what's best in this moment. Alright, here we go. 
we're going to put them right here. I'll put them right there. Okay, let's see. All right, Spirit, what did you, What anything else you have to say about, or want to say to Virgo? What's the potential outcome of healing and stuff like that? Nine of Pentacles reversed. Virgo energy, that's your card. You have a fear of abandonment. A deep one. Yeah, but you, you're, you're not, because of your fear of abandonment, you don't plant any seeds. That means you don't make offers of commitment and stability. You don't plant any seeds because you have a fear of abandonment. But yet, you self-sabotage and end up abandoning yourself and others because of that fear of abandonment. Yep, the divine is stepping in because things need to move forward. There, it, it, it needs to heal now. It needs to heal now. Yeah, king of swords here. Okay, the father, the masculine energy, with, they want you to, to communicate uh, maturely. They want you to hear other people. They want you to um, use your ideas appropriately. There's a father figure. This feels more like divine father um, energy or like a father in spirit that's coming in and saying, Hey, I want to speak with you. We need to talk and get some things um, cleared up for you. Okay. Yeah, this is why you don't commit. You don't. You are very slow, but you're also very um, lazy in commitments because you abandon yourself before you even abandon the relationship. You've already abandoned it within your heart and, your, and within yourself because you're actually abandoning yourself because you have a fear of abandonment. Yep. Four of Pentacles reverse. Yep. Capricorn Pisces energy here. You let go. You let go. You find a way to always let go. Because for you to stay stay in one spot and actually heal and do the healing work means you actually have to face your own shadow and deal with your abandonment, your deep-seated, rooted abandonment issues that you have been refusing to heal. Now, you could be dealing with an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, that is taking more of a, a it could be a male or a female, it could be taking on a more logical, truth-telling, non-emotional stance because they're done with this shit. This is someone who doesn't play. Okay? They don't play. Anything else for Virgo, please? They come with you, at you with truth and logic. And if this is about a relationship, they're walking away from you. They're walking away from you because... They're letting you go because they don't want to, because you haven't dealt with your fear of abandonment and you're the re, you have such a strong fear of abandonment that you will not commit. You will not plant seeds. You will not make a real investment in a relationship. There's no staying power. There's no real offer of longevity or legacy or healing or groundedness or foundation here. Not because of them, because of you. So they're leaving with the truth. Either they're leaving you or, or you've already abandoned them. They're just turning their back to this. What else are they supposed to do? You need to deal with this. You need to deal with your fear of abandonment. You're, whomever I'm reading for is super triggered right now. Like super triggered right now. It may not be showing it, but I kind of feel like they are. Yeah, you're somebody's. You are all up in your head. You're, but this is a self-imposed mental prison, and you're now just now getting into your emotions a little bit. Probably the other person is in their head too, but I feel like mostly it's you. Yeah, yeah, you're up in your head about an empress here, about a mother, a mother figure, a wife, a pregnant woman, maybe even. Taurus Libra energy here. You're up trapped in your head over this woman, this mother figure. You know why? Because you love her. Or him. Whatever your preference is. Okay? You abandon her in every single thing because you have a fear of abandonment. So you abandon first. So you run. You're a runner. You are a runner. Through and through. Not only are you running away from everybody else, but you're also trying to run away from yourself. Good luck with that. And you're trying to outrun the divine. Good luck with that too. So, yeah. You guys aren't speaking right now. There's emotional manipulation here. So there was a very, very painful ending due to someone's bad judgment. Not communicating. 
There's emotional manipulation here. Very, very painful ending due to a bad judgment here. Someone's someone's trying to recover, but they don't want to take this offer here because somebody's always in their freaking ego. Masculine energy here. They got a big, nasty ego, and they need to be humbled by the divine. Because this egoic person, big, nasty ego, will not be allowed to move forward. Period. Be mindful of driving, too. Okay? If you are under the influence. Because I can also see bad judgment with driving and having a potential accident. So, I'm not trying to manifest that. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying you need to fucking pay attention and move to the road. And do not be driving drunk or, or fucked up on anything. But fucking period. Also, make sure you check all the stuff on your car because there could very well be an accident. And you could, you either, you're going to be, you're messed up on something or alcohol or you're pissed. Your ego, your ego tripping and you are triggered. Also, if you've, okay, someone is saying this too. If you've accused somebody of, okay, if you've, okay, if you've accused someone of cheating, that's not what you saw. That's not what happened. That's not what that was. Ten of Pentacles reverse. Yeah, you're gonna you're you're not gonna be allowed to move forward towards your abundance until you deal with your fucking ego. But what you saw wasn't what you actually saw. That wasn't what that was. It sounds more like you projecting uh unfaithfulness or someone being a cheater or a liar or whatever onto somebody else because you're actually the one who's doing it. Check yourself, Virgo, for you fucking wreck yourself, Holmes. Seriously. Yeah, you're turning your back. You're turning your back on wish fulfillment here. Yeah, and then you're going to get the tower. Total destruction of a foundation. Because somebody here, Virgo energy, doesn't want to plant good seeds. You're, you are basically reaping what you've sown. The actions and choices that you have made. And you chose not to invest in a family dynamic. So therefore, guess what? You decided to not work on it with the queen of wands. And you're the king of wands. So you decided not to work on it. To not invest in it. To abandon it before it could potentially abandon you. But yet you've been self-sabotaging it the whole damn fucking time. Virgo. What did you expect? You're not alone though. Spirit is with you. Someone in spirit is with you. And the divine is with you. You are at rock bottom or you're about to be. And that's okay. I want you to know that's okay. It's time to deal with the abandonment. It's time to deal with the abandonment wounds. It is. It's time to deal with it. Hold on one second. So, here we go. We're going to read these cards. All right, here we go. Number 16 says black flower fragrance. We're going to read it. Let me find the page real fast. One second. Let me see. Um, number. Okay. Number 16. Let's see. Wait, that's in Spanish. <laughs> Hold on one second. Okay, here it is. Got it. All right. Black Flower Fragrance. It says, the world is unfair. Fuck off, dear world. Fuck you. Visual. I'm going to read this again. Wait, if you can see that. Hold on. If you can see it. Okay, it says... Ooh, uh, black flower fragrance, moon phase, full stage anger. The world is unfair. Fuck off, dear world. Fuck you. Visual seed. A one, a beautiful woman. Her face with a hint of resolve holds a strange black rose at on her chest. It seems to explode like a crystal. Each petal, an obsidian shard. Mm -hmm. Sentence. If we want to go dark, go black. Don't stop. Don't stop to the evening, but embrace the night. 
Love is not a white dove, nor it, nor it turns people into angels. Love can be ugly. Love can be cheap. Love can be rotten. But even ugly love has a right to exist. Even cheap love can rise to the sky. Even rotten love has the dignity of eternity. Even a black rose by any other name should still smell as sweet. Even if you are wrong, you were, even if you were, you are wrong, you still have the right to be angry. Even if you're, you're not perfect, you have the right to be respected. Even if you are stupid, you have the right to be listened to. Even if you are lucky, you have the right to complain. Even if you are rich, you have the right to be sad. If you cannot shine because you are beautiful, then shine even if you are ugly. Shine because you are ugly. Gorgeously black, ugly as love, worn out as an angel, cheap as a crown, unconquered as a fragrance in the night. Wow, that is deep. Uh, whoo. 19, Parasite. Moon phase, waxing crescent, stage depression. First comes anger, then comes the depression. It says, when, when the only answer to lack of self-efficiency is to cling to another one. Visual seed, a long-haired man with a pale-faced, heavy eyelids, a dull golden chain drapes over his forehead. Around his body and through his body, poisonous ivy grows and clings subtly to him. Sentence, we can't survive alone. We seek company, but instead of growing together, they will, rither, they will wither together, going dark. It says relationships are not a zero-sum game. Of course, using each other is part of the game, but it's quite different when you when you when use take the shape of supporting rather than manipulating or exploiting. In the long run, a good relationship is a win-win, where the more the more I give, the more I get, and the other way around. Still, it's not always like this, isn't it? Not just in the bad relationship. In the short run, bad is bound to happen even in the house of true love. We cling, we bite, we hunger for safety and freedom and support. And on the other side, we get mangled, bitten, demanded on. Well, it happens. It happened and it will happen again. It is part of the game. But if it happens too often, it creates a toxic environment. It doesn't matter if we are the victim or the perpetrator as poison is shared equally. One gets the pain, another one gets the advantage. But the toxic part, they both get full, fully. A parasite, a leech, kills itself as much as it kills the host. It sacrifices the journey to the destination and then the destination to its own failures. The problem is not living as sheep, but the true problem is living as a sheep from 100 years, for 100 years. I feel like that message came through loud and clear. If you want to get a personal reading with me, all the information will be in the description box below. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Virgo, I love you, and you can fucking do it. But ain't nobody going to do it for you. Take care of yourself, okay? Until next time.